Hello everyone, this is Rich Hay from WindowsObserver.com. The purpose of the video today is to introduce you to the Windows Phone App Builder. Now this, this is a complete in the browser process to build uh, simple and straightforward apps for Windows Phone. They're, they're apps that you can ultimately publish if you have a developer account or they're apps that you can sideload on your phone by downloading a, a special certificate from Microsoft, which they give you a link to in the final email when your app is ready. And then you can load it just on your phone and, and use it for whatever purpose you want. There are several different formats, several different templates already available, or you can stop, start from scratch. So we're going to, you got to go to apps.windowsstore.com and you got to visit uh, and click on the start building button. And you can see it's already reflecting the one app I've already built, which was ISS Jax, which is what I'm basing this process off of, except I'm going to build one called ISS Orlando to show you how simple and straightforward this process is. Now, the other thing I already have prepared, I'm reusing the icons that I created for ISS Jax, the graphics, to use for the ISS Orlando app as well. That way I don't have to redo that. So there is some work to do there, and if you ultimately publish this into the Windows Phone Store, you've got to have some additional graphics, screenshots, and things of that nature as well. All right, so once you're here in the App Studio, you want to click the Create button. And you can see right here, these are all the different templates that are currently available uh, for various types of apps. We're going to start with the Create an Empty app, because we're going to provide the data source. All right, and so we're going to call this, um, we're going to name this ISS Orlando. And then a brief description will be, see when the next visible pass of the ISS is over the skies of Orlando, Florida. Real simple. That's the explanation we'll use. And then right here is where you you choose the logo for your app. And like I said, I do have stuff already prepared. But you see in the recent updates to App Studio, they've included the cloud storage as well as some other App Studio resources. But I've got these files on my desktop in a folder. And the 160 by 160 is the one I'm going to use right there because it calls for the 160 by 160. And if you look over here on the right, you kind of got a simulated uh, Nokia Lumia handset and you can see, or Windows Phone handset, and you can see as this thing starts to be built. So we'll click Next. Now this is where you add the sections to your application. You can either add a section or you can add a menu. We don't need a menu for this app because it's very simple and straightforward, so we're going to add section. All right, and we're going to use an RSS as our data source. Now that RSS, I've already got it up here on the browser. It's called NASA Spot the Station. So what you do to get the RSS feed for your location, wherever you are, uh, you select your country. So we're going to go United States. We're going to go Florida. And then I'm going to pick Orlando. And then I'm going to hit Next. And it gives me a list of the next visible passes over Orlando. Now, the button up here is for the RSS feed. So this is the link I need. This is the data source we're going to use for our app. So I'm going to come back here to the uh, section of the uh, application. I'm going to click on RSS. And I'm going to call it uh, ISS RSS Orlando for the data source. And I'm going to uh, ISS Orlando here. I just got to give those the names. Then I'll get an opportunity here on the next page. I'm going to edit the data source. So right here, I'm going to give it the link. And now it comes up with the default uh, for the Windows Store. So I'm going to paste in, in the uh, XML or the RSS feed. And you'll see what happens when I hit the refresh button is it picks up the RSS. So that's how you're able to verify that things are working correctly. So once you got that done, you hit the check mark. The next part is... Uh, the names here, as you can see, ISS, RSS, Orlando is kind of all run together. So the title of this page will be Visible Passes. And then when I click outside of that, it will uh, update when I hit Preview. Oh, I'm sorry, I it's the header one that's got to do it. V-I-S-I-B-L-S, -S, Visible Passes. Okay, there we go. So now I'll preview it. And now you can see ISS Orlando's the title, Visible Passes, and then it's got the entries underneath there based on the data source, which is the RSS feed. All of these blocks here 
give you different formats for that data to be presented in. And you can pick whichever one you like. Since there's no background images on this data source, I'm going to choose not to use that as my source. So I'm going to go here to the first one, which is simply the title. And then the data summary. So you can see right here, it's pulling that information from my data source. And you can even click here and see the different sources that are available. But we're going to stick with the title there. And we're going to stick with the data summary there. All right. If there was an image attached, you could use that as well. So I'm going to save my changes here. All right, so next thing is uh, the info page. So when someone taps on one of the entries on the main page, um, we're going to call this pass info. And it's the same kind of setup as you can see. All right, you can add an image, a default image, if you want, but you don't have to. Here's the choices again for the layout. And you can have the image or you can have the image in text, all kinds of choices here. Now, I do want you to notice this says content here, not summary, but it's only showing a summary. And I can tell you from my own experience, that's just not displaying right here on the screen. It will show the entire set, excuse me, it will show the entire set of data once you uh, compile the app and put it on your phone. So once we got that selected, we hit Save Changes. So now we're now all of the information for our data source, and you can see a simulation of the app over here. So we go to the next page, or the next step. Now we get to pick the style of the app. This is where you get to pick the color of the letters, the color of the background, and things of that nature. So I'm just going to select these. Uh, we're going to have a blue background with the white text, and I'm going to leave everything else alone. Up here are the tiles option. You can have a flip template or you can have an iconic template. For this app, I'm using the flip template because it's simple. I don't have live data to put on the app, on the, uh, uh, on the tiles, so it's not truly live tile data. But I am going to put a little message here that says tap to see next visible pass. And now what will happen is, is when the tile flips on the start screen, it will have that simple text and people will be able to tap on it. If you want an image on the back of those, you can put one here that is at 340 by 715. And as you can see, the App Builder already took the 160 by 160 pixel image I created and also created a 340 by 340 to go on the half size tile, the medium size tile. All right, so once we got the flip template ready, we'll, we'll click that to be good and we'll click next. And your app is done. It is now ready to be generated. You can go to the summary page for the app and you can see some summary information about it. Of course, we don't have any images with it. You can share it if you want to share it with everybody that comes to the app builder. And then you got your choices here to generate it, edit it, or delete it. And you can see the icon, the name, and the summary we created. So I'm just going to select generate. And then it's going to go through the process of generating it. And they'll send you an email to your Microsoft account once the app is generated with a link. And that email will also have the link to the certificate you have to download in order to be able to use the, uh, the app on your phone without getting it through the Windows Phone Store. So we'll just let this run. It doesn't take long uh, usually. We'll let this run and uh, get the app ready to go. All right, all done. Now you see on the finish page, your email will have this information. You'll be able to download it. You'll be able to get the certificate, which is the link right here. And then also, you've got these. You can download the source code. That way you can bring it up in the Windows Phone developer tools and do some tweaking to it and, and changes and add in some things if you want to. Or you can download the, the uh, XAP package that is ready for upload to the uh, Windows Phone store for certification and submission. And you can also share it by email. Uh, and so it, it's very simple, very straightforward. It took us, what, all of uh, uh, about 10 minutes, 15 minutes to go through that process. You may have to spend a little bit of time preparing your icons and images. But once you've created that 160 by 160, that is enough to get you through building this app so that it will work and have what graphics it needs to have just for you to have it on your phone. If you want to put it up on the Windows Phone Store and you have a developer account, of course, then you're going to need some screenshots. And that's easy enough to get off of the phone once you've installed the app 
uh, on your phone using the certificate from Microsoft. So if you got any questions, please put them down in the comments on this story. And thanks for your time.